few days ago, Nas Daily received a lot of backlash for featuring the renowned tattoo artist Wang Od as one of the creators in the online learning site Nas Academy. Naturally, the internet went buzzing with opinions. The consensus? Nas Daily is taking advantage of Wang Od's talents for revenue. What in the world is going on? For better understanding, let's take a deep dive into the lives of those involved, the events that led to this controversy, the repercussions, and of course, our hot take about the issue. Let's hit it! Nushir Yassin is the Arab Israeli vlogger behind Nas Daily. More likely than not, you'd probably come across this iconic line. That's one minute. See you tomorrow! Yep, here's our guy. In 2016, he quit his job and set his sights on traveling worldwide and uploading 1,000 one-minute long videos daily on Facebook. While he finished his 1,000 video journey in 2019, he gained something else, a lot of following. As of August 8, 2021, his Facebook page has more than 20 million followers all over the world. A lot of them are Filipinos. Back in 2017, he uploaded a video showcasing his stay in the Philippines. Unsurprisingly, Filipinos loved it. Even the government awarded him a certificate of recognition for promoting tourism in the Philippines. Last year, 2020, Yassin created an online learning platform, NAS Academy. It features many renowned content creators and other personalities from whom you can learn skills for a certain fee. Well, it's an excellent idea. Learning directly from the pros. One of those personalities is a certain old lady called Wang Od. To say that Wang Od is a cultural icon would be a massive understatement. Tourists far from places flock to the province of Kalinga in the northern part of the Philippines just to get a tattoo from the 104-year-old artist. You see, Wang Od is known as the last and the oldest Mamba Batok, or traditional Kalinga tattoo artist, and has been practicing the art since she was 15. Back then, tattoos were for the tribe of Butbut. What makes her tattoos special is that they're made the traditional way. Her tattoo ink is made up of a combination of charcoal and water. Using a thorn from a citrus tree, she taps the ink to the skin. Moreover, her designs contain symbols specific to the Mambabato culture. Needless to say, getting inked by Wang Od could be painful. But for those who want a piece of Kalinga tradition on their skin, the pain is worth it. Moreover, she doesn't have children. She did have a husband who passed away decades ago. Tradition dictates that the Mambabatoks like her could only teach within the bloodline. To continue her legacy, she enlists her grandnieces Ilyang Wigan and Gracia Palikas as apprentices. Going back to the topic of NAS Academy, one of the courses from the platform is this. Wang Od Academy – Learning the Ancient Art of Tattooing Apparently, for 750 pesos, one can learn how to make tattoos like Wang Od. Quite a value for money. However, this is where everything gets spicier. Last August 4, Palikas claimed that the Wang Od Academy is a scam. She alleged that Nas Daily is using her grand aunt as a featured content creator on the site without consent. It was followed by another post where she claimed that Wang Od didn't understand what her translators were saying. Moreover, she voiced her concern about the traditions of the Butbut tribe being exploited. She does have a point. In the first place, selling her tattoo skills to outsiders would mean breaking the tribe's traditions. At the moment, both posts are offline, but the damage has been done. Thus, the internet is set ablaze. A lot of netizens raised their torches and accused him of using Filipino culture for money-making and personal fame. Moreover, they labeled the vlogger as a Pinoy baiter. Let's face it, Filipinos do tend to gravitate to content sensationalizing anything from their motherland. For content creators, it's an opportunity to generate revenue. We touched on the subject of Pinoy baiting a few months ago. So go ahead and watch it later if you'd like to learn more. At this point, Nas Daily has two options. Option 1, he could be a gentleman. Cancel the course, apologize to the fans, and move on with life. After all, having a beef with one of the nations that comprise a massive chunk of his fan base would be detrimental. Yes, he might be innocent, but a good guy image would undoubtedly help. Option 2 would be clashing against Wang Od's granddaughter, the Filipino nation, and other netizens. But unless he's got enough ammunition for the battle, Option 2 would most likely be a one-way ticket to the end of his career. Later on, Nas Daily took down the course, but that doesn't mean he went for Option 1. Using the Nas Daily Academy Facebook page, he claimed that Wang Od Academy was legitimate. 
For starters, he stated that Wang Ao's family loved the idea of her teaching her skills to the world. To prove that he got Wang Ao's consent, he shared a video of her using her thumbprint to sign the agreement. Furthermore, he alleged that Wang Ao's niece, Estela Palangdao, was present and had translated for the tattoo artist prior to signing. In addition, he claimed that everybody received compensation and that most of the revenue from the course went to Wang Ao's and her family. As for taking down the course, he said he did it out of respect for Wang Ao's family. However, one interesting bit of his statement is this. 40% of NAS Academy is made up of Filipinos. So for us, this is personal. A quick glance at the NAS Academy webpage shows that a dozen Filipino content creators are involved with the platform. Notable personalities include Jessica Soho, Erwin Yousaf, Moira De La Torre, just to name a few. We're yet to hear from these guys about their say on the issue, but then the choice of content creators would definitely be a great way to hook Pinoy's. Unfortunately for Nas Daily, his rebuttal was like dousing a burning building with a litter of bottled water. People are coming out, sharing their experiences with a vlogger. One of them was Luis Mabulo, who recounted her story via Facebook. Mabulo is the founder of the Cacao Project, an initiative that provides the farmers of San Fernando, Camarinesur, with cacao seedlings to help them recover from the damage brought by Typo Nina in 2016. Her advocacy caught the attention of the United Nations, which named her Young Champion of the Earth in 2019. Upon the referral of Mabulo's friend GMA reporter Shai Lagarde, Nasdaily came to her town. According to her, he only wanted content and deemed that farmers aren't click-worthy since no one wanted to hear from them. In addition, she alleged that Nas Daily blamed her for the lack of viewable content. She noted that before his visit, she was transparent that she did not think her work would be feature-worthy since there are so many factors. The whole thing couldn't possibly be covered in under a minute. There is a lot more to her post, but what is clear from her perspective is that Nas Daily, whom she was a big fan of, wasn't the same guy off camera. Her father and mayor of San Fernando, Fermin Mabulo, supported her daughter's claim that the vlogger wanted nothing but viewable content. Apparently, Nas Daily wanted to present her daughter as the chocolate lady of the Philippines instead of highlighting the farmers. According to the mayor, the vlogger also said, Mayor, we have a problem. We do not have content. To which he responded, We don't have a problem. You have a problem. In the end, he described the vlogger as arrogant and full of himself and that he is not a good role model to emulate. Nas Daily didn't allow the founder of the Cacao Project to have the last word. In a Facebook post addressed to her, he explained his side of the story, alleging that the Cacao Project wasn't as noble as portrayed in the media based on what he had witnessed during his visit. In his own words, that the awards on the internet are just that, awards, hence the decision that there is no story there. Moreover, he accused Mabulo of faking her story and voiced his disappointment over the debacle. Finally, he claimed that the Cacao Project is a family business from which she profits. Regardless of the barrage of revelations and the anger of the netizens, Nas Daily found allies in the middle of the brewing firestorm. Sort of. His friend and fellow content creator Project Nightfall spoke out about the controversy. As it turns out, he was with Nas Daily during the 2019 trip. According to him, things were going well inside Mabula's plantation, but they couldn't find a single living tree outside. I went with her and we took videos around her cocoa tree plantation. Everything was going well in the area she invited us to. The moment we left her plantation, we started facing a lot of problems. We were all dying. Tiny, dying trees. In the end, they decided not to feature the cacao project since allegedly the video would be a lie. However, he also expressed his dismay about being dragged into the issue, despite not being involved with Nas Daily for two years. Another friend and content creator, Lost Juan, spoke out as well. In his Facebook post, he shared that he was also part of Nas Daily's 2019 trip. He said whatever was featured in the news was exaggerated since they saw nothing but seedlings and small cacao. However, he also claimed that Nas Daily's attitude had changed since his rise in popularity. He felt disappointed because despite helping out his fellow content creator during his early days, Nas Daily never returned a favor. If you think about it, Project Nightfall and Lost Juan could have just zipped their mouths shut. But since they're getting dragged into the mess, they spoke out and defended Nas Daily but also distanced themselves from him. 
For all we know, they're probably doing this to save themselves. After all, Nas Daily isn't just the one under fire, but also content creators, especially foreigners, that deliver Pinoy-related content as well. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it's a possibility. As for the Mabulos, we couldn't assume that they're clean and innocent. For one, Nas Daily claimed that despite appearances, the Cacao Project is a family business. Nas Daily's current issue seems like a perfect opportunity for Ms. Mabulu to gain popularity and sympathy, thus boosting the business. That is, if the Cacao Project truly is a business. One thing that might get her in trouble if they is a good PR move as well. Again, these are mere speculations, but hey, anything's possible. There's zero doubt that, as of the moment, Nas Daily is going down. Ever since the controversy broke out, hashtag cancel Nas Daily has gone trending on Twitter. Even more alarming is the huge drop in followers. From August 4, 2021 to August 7, 2021, Nas Daily's main Facebook page has lost more than half a million subscribers. As of August 7, 2021, the page has 20.48 million followers. Besides the decrease in popularity, there are also legal repercussions. Dr. Nestor Castro, anthropologist and professor at the University of the Philippines, called out Nas Daily via Facebook for not understanding Kalinga culture and the Philippine law. He explained that Wang Od's skill on traditional tattooing is owned not just by her but also by the Butbut -but people. He also pointed out that consent from members of the ancestral domain is required when knowledge of indigenous people is used for commercial purposes. Based on the Republic Act No. 8371 or the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act. In other words, getting Wang Od's consent is not enough. The authorities, namely the National Commission of Indigenous Peoples, have intervened as well, saying they will review if there was informed consent between the two parties. Moreover, they emphasized that sharing a contract in social media is not proof of compliance. Oops. What's going to happen next? We can't say for now. Honestly, there are a lot of things we still do not know. Is this controversy nothing but a misunderstanding or is there really a devious attempt to generate money by cultural exploitation? Moreover, who's telling the truth? Well, the saga goes on. We'll see in the coming days and hopefully we'll get the answers we're looking for. By the way, if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We appreciate you letting us know how we're doing as we'll learn how to grow the channel further. Also, subscribe and turn on the notifications to get front row seats to watch Canon's mind-blowing videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.